Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look what I've got here. I've got a box, and inside this box is the Wombot XL, and this was shipped from Australia. That's right, the land down under. You might remember a while ago that I had a Wombot kit that I put together, and I made a, a deal with RMS over at Aurorum and Chuck over at Chep 3D Printing, and he's got my kit printer, uh, or RMS did some upgrades to the XL version of the Wombot, and the goal was, let me take a look at this printer to see if it's as good as that kit that I put together. What do you say we do this? Let's unbox this printer and let's use it. All right, uh, let's do this. <laughs> Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back. So like I said, this box full of Wombot here is going to get taken out and then we, I hope to put it through its first use. We'll see what happens. I do have my trusty knife that I've had ever since uh, I got married. It seems to work. Uh, I sharpen it every once in a while. Ooh, Aramis, you use some good tape on this. Either that or my knife is dull. Yeah, it's good tape. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know what's in here. All right, we've got the box open, and it uh, it has a lot of uh, styrofoam peanuts. Hey, they're good for protection, right? They uh, <laughs> there's a lot of styrofoam peanuts in here. Okay, uh, okay. First, let's see what's in here. Besides the styrofoam peanuts, there is oh, look at this. There is an, an Aurorum T-shirt. Thank you, Armus. There is a 3D printed pile of poop. This is the per I'm gonna cry. This is personal. One of my favorites. A bender. Bender and a poop. And a shirt. Let's see what else is in this box right here. Ooh, there's some Aurorum filament. Look at that box design. That's a pretty cool box. Not gonna lie. This is, this looks like the power brick. Uh, ah, some assembly acquired. This is the display right here, and it comes with the SD card pre-installed in the SD card slot. This is the spool holder. Oh, this is nice. So I remember on my Wombot, this middle piece here was actually a 3D printed part or a plastic piece. On this one, uh, it's, it's metal. This is a metal tube right here, and it fits pretty well. Okay, that'll be good. Ooh, there's some interesting filament in this one. We'll have to look into that one later. Hey, it's time to take out all these uh, styrofoam peanuts. Let's do this. Okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but uh, there's a lot of peanuts. All right, don't hate me. Okay, we've exhumed the printer from its Styrofoam grave, so to speak. And this is, this is good, okay. The, the x-axis is down and it is resting on a styrofoam piece here, so the nozzle itself is not impacting the plate. The printer's out, the styrofoam is mostly off of it. Let's set it aside and get this box out of the way. We've got the Wombot out of the box and here it sits. This is the LCD. This is going to sit right here. There's a little, there's a spot here and it looks like it goes right there. These are the two cables for the LCD. I'll plug those in. The cables are not labeled and they are the same size. So I don't know, I guess we'll find out which ones go where. This is the power cord right here and this is gonna plug into the power brick and the spool holder. That goes right here. In fact, I could probably put that on, what do you say? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna totally do it. I'm gonna put on the spool holder. <sighs> no one ever said I wasn't crazy. This is very compelling video, you guys. Award-winning. 
The spool holder is on. That's wonderful. Okay, here's the box right here. Uh, ooh. Oh, one of the things uh, I gotta tell you, uh, the reason it took so long to get this Wombot, originally we talked about this months ago, was because Armus was coming up with injection molded parts. So this LCD case here is injection molded. Uh, there are still some 3D printed parts where, like this, this case in the, in the back of this, but anything that's structural or requires rigidity, so these and this up front, those are all injection molded. So that's a good sign. Looks like it just sits in there. Oh, and that's really handy. So that way I could actually swivel it back around and control the printer from behind it. That's useful. Don't you judge me. It's useful. These are not labeled, so I'll just, I'll just put these in. Maybe that's it. Now I'm gonna take the power brick out and hook it up and I think what we might be able to do is move the X axis up using the menu so we can take out any of the uh, styrofoam still left. Sorry if this is boring. I'm a boring person. I was about to plug in this Wombot but first I wanted to make sure it was switched off and then I realized there's no power switch. I looked on the power brick and there's no power switch and this is just a standard cord so it's not switched there. This wire goes back to this connector and this connector is not switched so uh, let's see if I can get it back in maybe. There we go. Okay so there's no power switch. As soon as I plug it in it's going to be on. Watch the display. We'll see if I got it right. Look at that display. Ha! I got it right. Now watch. Wait, wait. Okay, it won't reach. Dang it. Watch as I control the printer from the side. Move axes, one millimeter, Z. I can remove that. Looks like there's some stuff under the bed I can remove. Oh, there we go. It looks like the, um, looks like the bed's a little loose. Looks like. Might have to adjust that. Oh well. Belts are tight. Let's take off this glass plate, clean it off, and then let's say we start a print, huh? <sighs> We've got the printer on. I've blown off all of the dust I could find on it. The, the bed moves, the head moves, everything's level. We gotta heat it up and we gotta put some of this filament into the printer and then we gotta see what's on that SD card. We've got some blues, we got some blacks, and we got some reds. I like this, I like the look of this red. So I think we're going to play with that. I'm assuming this is PLA. Here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna load it in. Let's preheat this thing. Oh, that's right, I can operate my printer from the side. Can you do that? No. No, you can't. I won't make you sit here through the entire warm up. Don't worry, once it's warm, I'll just skip to that part. All right, we're all heated up and I'm gonna put the PLA in, but the bed was just bare glass. It's heating up to 60. Uh, I'm streaming this right now. So if you're watching this right now and you also are watching the stream, you will have seen me ask this question. Hey, do I need to put anything on the bed for adhesion? PLA sticks to plain glass, right? But everybody kind of suggested glue or captain tape or whatever. I had some Uhu sticks, which is a PVA glue, and I put that on the bed, so that's that. Now we're preheated, so I can take out this PLA. Well, let's see if it extrudes. There it is. Oh, that's awesome. I'm trying not to hurt myself. This is the place where I hurt myself, you guys. I mean, shoot, I put a hole in my table. All right, if this doesn't work at, uh, at PLA temps, then we know this wasn't PLA, but it's coming through. I'll consider it PLA. Now we send a print. Let's see what's on the SD card. I've got Rocket 2 Vase and I've got Bender Head. I'm just gonna choose Rocket 2 Vase and see what happens. I'm kind of excited. Okay, perfect. I clicked Rocket 2 Vase. It's setting the bed to 50 C and it's attempting to jump the extruder to 205 C. It's exciting, you guys. It's the first use. Okay, we're at heating, doing stuff. The Wombite XL does have a BL Touch for auto bed tramming and auto bed leveling, whatever the right term is, I don't remember. Let's see if it works. I'm assuming since this is pre-built that everything is configured correctly and uh, I'm assuming I don't have to do anything to the bed leveling. Uh, I think that's a safe assumption. I think that I need to get this styrofoam out of there. The auto leveling procedure isn't the fastest, but you know, if it works well, then auto leveling produces some of the best first layers you're ever gonna see. Standard procedure for a BL Touch is to drop down fast, impact, 
come up a little bit and then drop down much slower to get finer controls and to actually get an accurate measurement. It's almost time, you guys. Last spot, it did a three by three grid. Moves the center. It's printing. Come here. Okay. This is the, um, uh, the skirt around its print. It looks like it didn't stick or it failed or something caught on the nozzle or something. I'm not too worried about that as long as the print looks good. I'm gonna step away for a second. I'm gonna continue to let this print and then once this print is done, we'll have some final thoughts. Stick around. Oh, wait a minute, stick around. What am I talking about? As soon as I hit cut, I'm just gonna splice it the part where I'm like, well, here we go. Stick around. Look at that, the print is almost finished. It's a hollow rocket. It looks good, right? It performed like it should. This looks decent. Uh, I'm excited to use this printer. Thanks again to RMS from Aurorum who provided this printer for me in order to compare its performance against the old Wombot kit that I put together so, so long ago. I'm gonna consider this printer unboxed and first used. Ah, this is fun. All right, a big thanks to everybody who tuned into the live stream while I shot this. A big thanks to everybody who's watching this right now. Give it a big old thumbs up if you're a fan of Aurorum, if you like Wombots, if you can't wait to see what this machine can produce. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. By subscribing, you're showing me that you like my content and you want me to keep producing it. I appreciate that. All right, let's call it good. This printer is unboxed. It is ready to go. Hey, uh, let's do this again sometime, all right? Don't forget, hug each other more often. I love you guys. As always, high five.